All right, so get this. Uh, we're going deep into ATG proteins today. Oh, cool. Yeah. Specifically, this thing called agiation, and trust me, it's way cooler than it sounds. Okay. It's basically like reshaping how we think about our immune systems, and we've got two awesome scientific papers as our guide. One's all about tuberculosis. Interesting. Yeah, and the other takes a wider view of how adiation impacts, well, all sorts of diseases and immune responses. I see. So kind of a broad overview and then a more focused look. Exactly. By the time we're done, you'll be the adiation guru of your friend group. I guarantee it. I like it. So. Well, it really does overturn a lot of assumptions about how cells work, especially when it comes to autophagy. Okay, autophagy. Hit me with the basics. Sure. Isn't that like the cell's spring cleaning? Exactly. Cells basically break down and recycle their own parts. So yeah, it's like mm -hmm. decluttering on a microscopic level. And for years, scientists thought that was the main job of these ATG proteins. And we're talking about specific ATG proteins, right? Like LC3B. Yeah. LC3B is a big one for sure. I vaguely remember that name from a bio class somewhere. Right. It's been used as a marker for autophagy for ages. Oh, okay. But here's the thing. It's just one piece of a much bigger picture. Mm. We're talking about a G alation where ATG proteins like LC3B and others attach themselves to membranes. So they're like putting sticky notes on stuff saying, hey, look at this. Yeah. But why? What's the big deal about tagging these membranes? Well, think about it. Membranes are the barriers and compartments in your cells, right? Right. So by tagging them, ATG proteins are basically sending signals and triggering actions way beyond just, you know, breaking down old cell parts. Oh, hold on. So it's not just about taking out the trash. Nope. There's much more to it. Okay. So what else are these ATG proteins doing? Things get really interesting here. This agiolation process, it's involved in responding to all kinds of cellular stress. Okay. It remodels those membranes and even directly fights off invaders. Whoa, multitasking ninjas. But how does this tagging even work? It sounds complicated. It's intricate, but also elegant. Imagine a cellular assembly line with these enzymes called E1, E2, and E3 ligases, each with a specific job. They work together to attach that ATG protein to the membrane. So it's like a choreographed molecular dance. Exactly. Yeah. Happening all the time in our cells. And here's another mind-blowing fact. These ATG proteins can also attach to other proteins. Wait, what? Not just membranes. So they tag membranes, A and D proteins, overachievers. Uh-huh. Right. So we've got... At geolation, this core process that's way more than just cleaning up. Can we break down these other roles a bit? What are they up to? Sure. Let's start with canonical autophagy, that classic recycling program. Mm -hmm. It's still super important. Your cells are constantly exposed to damage. They need to get rid of faulty parts. Right. Autophagy helps with that, and it also impacts things like metabolism and immunity. Okay, so keeping things tidy helps the cell run smoothly, and the immune system stays happy. Exactly. Makes sense. What about those other non-canonical roles where things get a bit more uh, out there? Okay, so picture this. A bacterial invader trying to sneak into your cell. Oh. Your immune system has to act fast, and that's where LC3-associated phagocytosis, or LAP, comes in. LAP. Yeah, it's like a specialized SWAT team using agiolation to tag the membrane around that bacteria. Interesting. It makes it easier to engulf and destroy it. So it's giving our immune cells a power up. You got it. There are other examples too, like Lando. Lando, like from Star Wars. Uh huh. Kind of. Yeah. It stands for LC3 associated endocytosis. Uh -huh. Think of it as the cell, like taking a sip of its surroundings, guided by ATG proteins. Oh, okay. And then there's lamb. LC3-associated micropinocytosis, which is involved in taking larger gulps. So we've got the recycling crew, the bacterial SWAT team, and now these sipping and gulping operations. It's a whole city in there. Right. You also mentioned stuff that's not even autophagy at all. Exactly. Remember lysosomes, those recycling centers. They need maintenance, too, and etchiolation helps with that. Okay. And then there's the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum, the cell's protein factory. Mm. At etchiolation keeps it from getting overloaded. So waste management, security, quality control, and even production management. All that? These ATG proteins are the ultimate multitaskers. And there's still more. They're involved in unconventional secretion, which is how cells release certain molecules without using the usual pathways. So a secret back door out of the cell? You could say that. Sneaky! What kind of stuff are they smuggling out? Well, imagine this. At this. The cell releases tiny decoys called defensosomes. Defensosomes. Yeah. They can neutralize bacterial toxins. No way. And some evidence even suggests they could help fight off viruses like SARS-CoV-2. So, like, our cells are deploying tiny Trojan horses. Pretty much. That's genius. 
But it feels like there's more. Well, there's much more. We haven't even touched on how agiolation plays a crucial role in cellular signaling. Right. Like impacting MTR and MPK. The energy regulator. Yeah, those guys. We barely scratched the surface here. I'm not even close. Okay, well, before we dive into those signaling pathways, let's take a quick pause. Trust me, you won't want to miss what comes next. Definitely not. Welcome back. Ready to explore more of this agiolation story. Totally. Last time we were talking about how agiolation isn't just cleaning house. It's also involved in cell signaling. Right. It's like this whole communication network. And agiolation is sending out signals that impact everything. So does that include MTOR and AMPK, those energy regulators? Exactly. They're like the yin and yang of the cell's energy balance. And agiolation can influence them. Wow. So it's like agiolation is conducting the whole orchestra, making sure everyone's in sync. Great analogy. And remember those lysosomes, the recycling centers? Yeah. Well, agiolation is involved in their creation and maintenance, too. Wait, how so? There's this protein, TFEB, basically the architect of lysosomes. Okay. It tells itself, hey, we need more recycling centers over here. And guess what activates TFEB? At agiolation? Bingo. GABRAP, one of those ATG proteins, helps activate TFEB. So it's like a chain reaction. Agiolation to GABRAP to TFEB and boom, more lysosomes. It's a beautifully orchestrated system. And get this, when lysosomes get damaged, agiodation helps with repairs too. Damaged lysosomes? What happens then? Well, if a lysosome gets damaged, all those digestive enzymes leak out, and it can cause havoc. Oh, yikes. So agiodation steps in for damage control. Interesting. It can trigger repair mechanisms. Okay. But if the damage is too much, it activates lysophagy. Lyso what? Lysophagy, it's autophagy, but specifically targeted at those damaged lysosomes. So it's like calling in a demolition team to safely get rid of the hazard. Exactly. And all of this is happening in the context of our immune system. Right, which is constantly on alert. Right. And that brings us back to tuberculosis. The paper we talked about before? Exactly. This is where we see just how crucial the anti-inflammatory effects of agiolation are for controlling infection. Anti-inflammatory? I thought inflammation was how our bodies fight infection. It is, but too much inflammation can be bad. Okay, yeah, too much of a good thing. Right, like a fire, a little bit can clear debris, but too much, and it burns the house down. Makes sense. So how does agiolation help keep things in check? In a few ways. It can suppress inflammasomes, those alarm systems that trigger inflammation. Okay. And it can also dampen the activity of various immune signaling proteins. So it's like the peacekeeper. Exactly. And this is especially important with tuberculosis. Remember that sidestep conjugation yeah. between ATG12 and ATG3? Yeah, the one that sounded kind of mysterious. Well, it turns out that conjugation is crucial for keeping inflammation in check during tuberculosis infection. But how did they figure that out? They studied what happens when you take away ATG5. ATG5, that's usually involved in the regular autophagy process. But exactly, the one with those double membrane autophagosomes. Right. But when ATG5 is gone, this sidestep conjugation becomes even more important. Hmm. So it's like the cell is compensating. Exactly. It's incredibly adaptable. And what's really interesting is that when this sidestep conjugation is happening, you see less inflammation. Less inflammation and better control of the infection. Exactly. It highlights how crucial ATG12 and ATG3 are, even outside of their usual role. So it's not just about gobbling up the bacteria. It's also about fine-tuning the immune response. Exactly. And we see this pattern with other infections, too, like influenza and listeria. Agiodilation keeps things from getting out of control. It's like the immune system's chill pill. Uh-huh. Yeah, you could say that. But it's not always about suppressing the response completely. Sometimes you need a strong response to fight infection. So how does the cell know when to do what? That's a great question. Scientists are still trying to figure that out fully. It seems like a agiolation helps sense the level of threat. So it's like a thermostat. Exactly. This interplay between agiodilation, immunity, and metabolism, it's all incredibly complex. Wow, we've covered a lot. We have, but there's still more to come. The story of agiolation gets even more fascinating. Okay, so we've gone from spring cleaning to SWAT teams to peacekeepers. What's next in our agiolation adventure? Well, it really is amazing how much is going on inside our cells, and we've only just scratched the surface. I know, but speaking of scratching the surface, what about the bigger picture? How does all this actually help people? Ah, the million-dollar question. Researchers are exploring that right now, but the therapeutic potential is huge. Okay, what kind of diseases are we talking about? Well, we've seen that agiolation can boost A and D suppress the immune response. Right. 
and it can clear out damaged parts and regulate energy pathways. So it's kind of doing it all. Exactly. So that opens up possibilities for treating a wide range of conditions, from infections to cancer, even neurodegenerative diseases. Wow. So how do we even manipulate a geolation to treat those? Are we talking about like new drugs? Drugs, therapies, oh, both, yeah. actually. Scientists are looking at different approaches. Okay. Like for infections, could we develop drugs that enhance a geolation? Interesting. Especially for people with weaker immune systems. That could be a game changer. Yeah, give the immune system that extra boost. Exactly. Mm. But then on the flip side, remember a geolation can also dampen inflammation. Right, the peacekeeper. So in conditions where inflammation is a problem, like autoimmune diseases or neurodegenerative disorders, being able to dial it down could be really beneficial. So finding that balance is key. It is, and it's complex. To target a geolation so precisely... Our cells are like intricate machines. Right. You don't want to mess things up. Exactly. Researchers are being cautious, making sure they understand all the details before developing therapies. Makes sense. Are there any examples of like promising therapies in development? Yeah. A few exciting areas. For instance, some scientists are looking at ways to enhance mitophagy. Mitophagy. That's the recycling of damaged mitochondria, right? Yes. Boosting that could be beneficial for things like heart disease. Even Parkinson's. Like a tune-up for those cellular powerhouses. Exactly. And there's also a lot of interest in that sidestep conjugation we talked about. The one that helps control inflammation and tuberculosis. Right. Researchers are exploring whether we can manipulate that to treat other inflammatory diseases, too. It's like we're learning how to talk to ourselves, giving them instructions. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. But research takes time. These therapies are still early. But the potential is there. I'm excited to see what comes next. It's amazing how something like tagging a membrane could be so important. It is remarkable. And it just shows the power of basic research. Sometimes the biggest discoveries come from just asking questions and following your curiosity. So true. Maybe one of our listeners will be inspired to join this field. I hope so. There's so much to explore in the world of adjulation. Well, listeners, it's time to surface from our deep dive. We've journeyed through this fascinating world, from cellular recycling to the potential for new medicine. We learned how this process, once thought to be simple cleanup, is actually this master regulator keeping us healthy. And while there's still much to discover, the future of adjulation research is incredibly bright, with the potential to change how we treat disease. So keep exploring, keep asking questions, and never lose that sense of wonder. You never know what amazing discoveries are waiting to be found. Exactly. Until next time, happy exploring.